Day three. So today we are going to start having a look at the power of food and also food rules. So, so far I have invited you to have a look at your current relationship with food, your body and eating. And then yesterday you were invited to just start looking at how diet cultures create this mistrust and the self-doubt that we have in ourselves. It's really important that we start exploring this stuff from a different perspective. If not, we're just gonna carry on with this belief that our weight and our bodies are the problem. And all the while we think our weight and our body is the problem, guess what? We are going to work on trying to fix that problem. And for so many of us, you know, our weight is not the problem. It's what's going on behind the weight. And that's kind of where I've just wanted to start getting you thinking a little bit differently. So today, the power of food, the power of food and food rules, you know, and as we work through the training today, you know, we all have rules and some of us have healthy food rules and some of us have some unhealthy food rules. You know, I talk a lot about giving ourselves permission to eat. That is not a free for all. We do have to have some boundaries and some rules around food, but quite often the rules um, and the boundaries that we do have are feeding into um, part of our dysfunction and disordered food relationship. So we have all accumulated a variety of food rules over the years. They start in childhood and then they just develop and grow with us into adulthood. So very much influenced by friends and family and certainly diet culture. So that's what we're gonna look at today. Now, this is a really, really big part of our healing journey. And for those of you that know, I run a 12 weeks, my 12 week signature program, which is called If, Diet Don't, if Diets Don't Work, What Does? You know, this is a thread that runs all the way through it. First of all, getting those on the course starting to think about their own food rules. But then it's not just food rules, it's body rules, it's eating rules. Because even if we're not conscious of these rules that we're living by, because we've been living by them for so long and they're so deeply ingrained, they are there and they are hugely influencing the way that you are living your lives, the way you see your body, the way you relate to food, the way you relate to eating. And it, you know, a big part of healing and a big part of moving away from diets and diet culture is actually bringing some of this stuff into awareness. So today is just kind of like the tip of the iceberg. We're just gonna look at the food rules, some of the food rules. But on the 12 week program that I run, this is a much, much bigger, part of the overall project and it's something that we continue to look at as you go through that those 12 weeks as the more awareness we gain about ourselves and our relationship to food and our bodies and eating the more we start to see these ingrained patterns and when we see them we can start to change them so today we are going to explore your food rules and we are also you can also have a chance to look at the good and bad food list and have a chance to from today practice a little experiment so download your workbooks because that's what you're going to need to be able to work through each of the little questions that i've got planned for you today so the first thing i invite you to do is just to spend 10 or 15 minutes thinking about your food rules now you may not think that you um follow any food rules today we are going to just look at the food rules it's not the body and eating rules because like I say it's such a big a, a, a big area of our food relationship so today we are just going to look at the food rule stuff so I want you to start thinking about the food rules that you are currently following and often these food rules have been with us for such a long time you know they start in childhood they're reinforced um, by families and friends and certainly then diet culture reinforces them so they may have been with you for a long long while so they feel very familiar and very normal and you may not see them as an unhealthy food rule and again you know we have healthy food rules but these i'm focusing on what i want you to focus on today are the unhealthy food rules there are some prompts at the back the back of this workbook if you're struggling to think of anything but things like the time of the day that you eat the kinds of foods that you eat um 
the labels that you put on certain foods. So really just starting to think about the food rules that you've got going on in your life at the moment. So just spend 10 or 15 minutes jotting them down. Then number two, there is a questionnaire. It's a simple yes or no answer. It's really there just to start deepening and getting your mind thinking about the different ways you do um, engage in food rules. So really simple, read the question, answer yes or no, be as honest as you can when answering those questions. And then from that, they may have prompted some you to remember some other food rules. And if you do, go back to number one and write them down. Equally, as you're going through the rest of this week and you start to notice some of your food rules, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? Once we start bringing this stuff into our awareness and into our arena, we start noticing all sorts of things. You might notice some food rules in other people. Um, so once we start to like peek behind the curtain, we start seeing more of this stuff. So complete the questionnaire. If any of those prompts remind you of other food rules, go and write them in question, under question one. Then what I want you to do is start to, is I want you to just choose a couple of those, of those questions, the ones you've said yes to, I want you to just explore them a little bit more deeply. So the, Choose a couple that you've said yes to, and then I want you to think about where did that food rule come from? And how does it impact on your life? And does it still apply? So let's use, if you've got a time related food rule, if you're somebody that tells yourself you shouldn't eat after eight o'clock at night, where does that come from? Was that something that was in your family? Was that something that you learned from a diet that you once went on? How does that impact on you? Does that see you maybe sitting there at half past eight, feeling like you want to eat something and then battling with yourself and then maybe going to the kitchen and grabbing something and eating it without anybody seeing you eat it? So pick a couple of those, um, explore where that rule came from, how does it impact you? And then ask yourself, does that rule really still apply? and to start just starting to break down. You know, a lot of these rules we have been doing unconsciously for such a long time, we've never taken the time to actually question whether they actually serve us or not, or whether they still apply, especially the ones from childhood. Those ones that have been ingrained in us for a long time can be just so automatic that we never take the time to stop. The finishing everything on your plate is a lovely food rule, isn't it, from childhood, where we don't, every time we're eating, think, oh, I've got to eat this to please mum. Um, it's so ingrained in us, we just do it automatically. And does that one still serve us? You know, does it serve us to eat everything on our plate? You know, I think we know differently now, don't we? So that's the next part. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move into the good and bad food list. These are, this is another food, for, form of food rules. And most of us consciously or unconsciously have a good and bad food list. And uh, sadly, what happens when we eat foods off the good food list is we feel good. But if we eat foods from the bad food, they kind of tap into our, it's like a moral judgment that gets applied to them. And so... Um, if we eat the bad foods, we tend to enjoy them while we're eating them, albeit I know there's been times in the past when I've been eating them and feeling guilty as I'm eating them. So the, the good and bad food list really invites the whole moral attachment that we place on it. And those bad foods lists create fear. And we if we feel afraid of eating things, we will avoid them. So this is the first thing I want you to do is just spend a bit of time writing down the foods that you consciously or unconsciously have labelled at some point as being good, normally chicken and salad. And then I want you to write down the list of foods that consciously or unconsciously you label as bad, normally cake and chips and chocolate and all of that stuff. Okay, so this may not be, these may not be labels that you live by every single day, but you know, this stuff is very ingrained in us. And even if on some days we're not living by those rules on other days, they slip in, they're sneaky, they slip in. So once you've done that, I am then inviting you to do an experiment. And this experiment is geared around permission to eat, unconditional permission to eat. And it's such an important part of building trust with food. But Unconditional permission to eat doesn't mean free for all. It doesn't mean just eat everything that you want to eat. It does invite you to not restrict or have any bad foods, 
but eating them in a way that does have some parameters around it. So this is your, gonna be your first little experiment that I want you to try today and every day for the rest of this program. It's an experiment, okay? And it may bring up some fear for you. If it does, come and talk about it in the group so we can share our, um, how we feel about doing stuff like this. And equally, if you go and do the experiment and it goes terribly wrong and you end up troughing all of the thing and more. Again, it's a good alert opportunity for learning. So come and talk to me. So the experiment, ladies, is to choose something that you've written on your bad food list. Okay. And what I want you to do is eat it every day until the end of the program. Okay. But there are some parameters around that. So and this is all outlined in, in your workbook. So it's important that we create the right environment. So first of all, choose the food that you're gonna eat, and then what I want you to do is portion it in some way. Put it on a plate, put it in a bowl. If it's a packet of crisps, it's already portioned. So portion it. Then think about the environment. The environment we eat in is hugely influential. So think about what you're gonna eat, the portion, get it portioned, then think about the environment. Are you gonna sit in your favorite room, in your favorite chair, at the table? So think about this stuff. Then what I want you to do is I want you to, before you eat it, I want you to say to yourself, I give myself unconditional permission to eat this food, okay? So it's really important that you do that because what you're starting to do is prepare yourself to eat the food with full permission. This stuff does take practice, but it's something what you start to, what we're starting to try and do here is desensitize yourself from these beliefs that eating food is bad and therefore avoiding foods or when you do eat them, you end up feeling guilty. So you see that, you know, this is the start of something. If we do it often enough, we start to change the way we view those foods. So choose the food, portion it, choose the environment, say to yourself, I give myself unconditional permission to eat, then I want you to sit and eat that food over a 10 or 15 minute window and to really tune in to how that food tastes and how it makes you feel, okay? Once you've done that, I just want you to then spend a little bit of time just thinking about how you found that experience and come and write a little bit in your workbook or come and share how you got on in the group. It'd be really lovely if a few of you are trying this out and let us know how it goes. Then I want you to repeat this exercise every day to the end of the program and beyond if it's serving you. Um, you can choose to have the same food every day or you can choose a different food off your, um, off your bad food list, but there are, there's a school of thought if you choose the same one every day, that's quite supportive, but there's no hard and fast rules around it. So that is today's exercise, guys. A few things to do there, very much focusing on your current food rules, then thinking about where do they come from, how do they impact you and are they serving you? And then moving into the good and bad food list and the little experiment. So I look forward to hearing how you get on with this one.